In this video, we'll be taking a look at the secondary locking mechanism of the Schlage Alpine kick cylinder. Hey folks, welcome to Pugs Picks Locks. If you're new here, feel free to click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you'll always be notified when I release new content like this. And if you like the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, click that like button, and leave a comment or a question down below. I don't always get everything right, so if I got something wrong, if there's something I could do better, do differently, please let me know. I want to learn from all of you to continue to grow my knowledge and skill set and provide you with better and better content. Let's start out with the shout out of the week. This week's shout out goes to Kix Pix. Kix Pix not only does incredible pick fabrication, but he has incredible picking skills as well. His channel covers pick fabrication, speed picking, giveaways, and a fantastic intro to lock picking video called The Complete Guide to Lock Picking. At last check, he has 354 subscribers, so let's do what we can to get him over that 400 mark. Okay, let's dive into this video. As you progress in the difficulty of the locks that you pick, you'll eventually start to encounter locks with secondary locking mechanisms. These can be things like sidebars or multiple keyways or magnetic pins or a secondary set of pins and more. There's so many different secondary locking mechanisms in use out there. You can see on the face of this plug right here and on the face of the key right here, this little delta symbol, it looks like a stylized A. This denotes that the lock is a Schlage Alpine lock and not just a standard Schlage with no extra security measures. Alpines are a great introduction to secondary locking mechanisms because the detent pin that they use is relatively easy to overcome. And we'll take a close-up look at the detent pin when we got the lock after I show you how to pick it and defeat that secondary mechanism. All right, let's start with the key. You can see that this is a uh, regular uh, seeming functioning key. Um, but what makes this key unique isn't the bidding. I mean, the bidding is a little bit on the tough side. It has... Uh, a very low lift uh, that's protecting some very high lifts behind it but it's not the worst bidding that we've seen right what makes it unique actually is on the on this side of the key the channel that's cut out to interface with the um the warding right here this little bit of warding this cutout has this uh, notch and this bump right here cut into it and the uh, that lower part of the key there is actually has space behind it um, for something to slide in um, behind it like you can see like I'm doing with this broken key extraction tool so that is meant to interface with this notch on the bottom of the warding here and it provides this channel where the detent pin you can hear me tapping against it where the detent pin lives and so when you insert the key this section of that um, cutout of this channel this section right here lifts the detent pin out of the way so that the plug can actually turn. To show you what I mean a little bit better, um, let's take this core and you can see right here, um, this hole in the bottom of the cylinder and you can see a pin sticking through that hole. And it's that pin that uh, prevents the core from turning, that prevents the plug from turning even if you have all the pins properly set above the shear line in the Bible. Um, it's spring-loaded, so you can see that if I poke it, 
it bounces right back. It's spring loaded. And you can see that the key being inserted lifts that pin out of the hole in the cylinder wall. And that allows the plug to be able to be turned. All right, so let's pick this open and take a closer look at it and how this actually works. So let me turn this so I get a better angle to attack the lock with. We're gonna be using a South Ord standard short hook. We're not using um, my normal Pagoda hook, my favorite uh, tool. Um, my favorite pick because the standard short hook has a little bit of extra meat here in the shaft of the pick. So that um, extra meat gives it a little bit extra structural stability so that when I'm cranking on a pin, um, if I need to crank hard on a pin, it won't bend and flex as much and I won't run the risk of damaging my tools. We're going to be using top of the keyway tension with this little Z wrench. This Z wrench is my favorite turning tool. And we're gonna be going top of the keyway. The reason why we're going top of the keyway is to leave space in the bottom of the keyway for me to insert this uh, broken key extractor and interface with that um, so I can actually lift that detent pin. So. The broken key extraction tool is a uh, South is made by South Ord. This one's made by South Ord, but it's exactly the same as every other broken key extractor you've ever seen. The reason why I'm using a broken key extractor is because it has a pointed tip, and that pointed tip allows me to um, kind of work my way underneath the detent pin and lift it. The, um, the other reason why I'm using it is because it's a very thin gauge of steel. And that really super thin profile, that super thin gauge steel, slips nicely into that channel so I can get at the detent pin. All right, let's go ahead and um, pick this thing for you. So I'm going to get underneath pin one. And we're going to lift pin one. And did you see that we fell into a false set? Now, when I was lifting pin one, there's absolutely nothing special about it. There's no crunchiness indicating a serrated pin. There is no um, counter rotation or anything like that indicating a spool or anything else fancy. It felt like a standard pin. But as soon as I lifted that pin, we fell into a little bit of a false set. So let me show you that again. Get underneath pin one, lift it, and did you see we clicked over into a bit of a false set? As soon as you get a false set on these Alpine locks, um, that means it's time to go after the detent pin. Because we fell into a false set, the plug cannot rotate any further until that pin is lifted. So I'm going to take my broken key extractor, I'm going to slide it down in that little channel at the bottom of the keyway, and I'm gonna wiggle it against the detent pin, make sure it's facing the right side up. And now you see when, as soon as that pin released, we fell into a deeper false set. I'm gonna show you that again. Just pay attention to the tip of the, uh, of the turning tool, um, of the tension wrench. So I'm lifting pin one, and we get a little bit of a false set. And then as soon as I clear the detent pin, and by the way, I call it a detent pin because I don't know any better. If Schlage has an official name for it or if there's an industry standard term for this type of secondary locking mechanism, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so, and you'll see when I lift the detent pin, we're gonna fall into a deeper false set. So pay attention to the tip of the tension wrench. you see it click over into a deeper false set. Um, but just uh, so you know, I'm using kind of light uh, medium tension, a little bit more than just, so light tension would be just being able to slip the pick right through. I'm using a little bit more on the medium side, so it takes a little bit more effort to slip that pick through. Okay, let's go after the rest of the pins now. So that was pin one. 
that still feels set. Pin two. Okay, I'm cranking on pin two quite a bit here and it's not moving. You can see I'm easing up on the tension even and it's not moving. So I'm gonna move on to pin three to avoid um, cranking too hard and oversetting it. So pin three, I got a little bit of a click and now I'm getting some counter rotation. So I'm gonna really ease up on the tension. I'm gonna ride that counter rotation and we fall back into our false set. Now pin four, same thing, counter rotation. So I'm gonna ride that counter rotation and we fall back into our false set. So it appears that three and four are spool pins um, because of the counter rotation that we got. And then here's pin five. Pin five gave a click and slid up into the Bible and now is doing nothing for us. Pin six, just I touched it and it just slid right up into the Bible. Um, and that's going nowhere. I'm gonna go back to pin five and pin five is now giving a little bit of counter rotation. So I'm gonna ride that counter rotation. We fall back into our false set. Pin six now gave me a solid click and now it's giving me counter rotation. So I'm gonna ride that counter rotation and I could feel pin six slide up into the Bible. I could feel it past the shear line, but we did not get our false set back. So that means that something probably fell back down into the keyway, one of the previously set pins. So I'm gonna just then explore that real quick. So here's six, five. I touched five and we fell into a much deeper false set, a very, very deep false set here. Um, so normally when you fall into a false, deep false set, when you've set um, most of the pins or all the pins, it's time to play hunt the spool. And we're pretty sure it's two because two didn't move, right? So six feels set. Here's five, five feels set. Here's four, four feels set. And then three, three feels set. So here's two. Two is binding, but it's moving. And we have our open celebratory wiggle. Um, what was interesting about that is you didn't see any counter rotation on two, but we had a really seriously deep false set. And usually a false set um, indicates a spool pin, but a spool pin would have given us counter rotation. So when we got the lock, we're gonna take a look at what's going on with pin two. Um, just so you know, sometimes I didn't have to do it with this lock. I didn't have to do it this time with this lock, but sometimes you'll have to clear that detent pin more than once. Um, sometimes you'll set a pin, get that false, first false set, clear the detent pin. And then when you set the next pin, the detent pin might pop back down into, um, its locked position, um, due to counter rotation. And so you might have to. Um, clear that detent pin over and over again. I didn't have to do it with this lock though. Okay, so let's um, get our key back in here and move this out of the way and get our pinning tray. And we're gonna get our pinning tray set up and we're going to get this lock. So the key, um, I'm gonna move take the key out one position just so that the lock doesn't uh, the plug can't spin while I'm removing the end cap here so okay there's our end cap um, there's our retaining pin for the end cap and there's the spring, the retaining pin spring. All right, so now I'm gonna put the key all the way in. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a turn and then I'm gonna insert a shim underneath the Bible so that we don't have pins flying all over the place. Um, I did say that the uh, detent pin is under um, spring pressure. So you do have to pay a little bit of attention to make sure that doesn't go flying and you lose either the pin or the spring. 
Um, it does, the key does hold that detent pin captive though. So we don't have to worry about that quite yet. So let's get the shim in and there we go. And let's get our follower and push the plug out. And there we go. Um, let's get that out of the way. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try to do this without spilling pins all over the place. So you can see the key is holding the detent pin captive and I'll show you how that works in just a moment. Um, so we're not gonna pull the key out. If we pull the key out here, we um, that detent pin will then come popping out under pressure. So let's go ahead and dump out the key pins and take a look at the key pins. So there's one, there's two. These are all standard pins. There's three. There's four. Oops. There's five. And there's six. Okay. And you can see that all of um, the key pins are just everyday, ordinary, standard key pins. All right, let's take the detent pin out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover the detent pin with my thumb, I'm gonna pull the key out, and, um, and it is under pressure, so under spring pressure, so I'm gonna be very careful as I let it pop up. So there it is. Um, and I'm gonna drop the spring out. There's the spring for the detent pin. Make sure we don't lose that little sucker. All right. And there are our key pins and our um, detent pin. You can see that the detent pin is shaped a little bit like a, uh, it has a little hook on it and or it looks like a little like a knight on a chessboard um, but that little hook is what interfaces with the key to lift that pin out of the plug so actually let's put um let's put the detent pin back in so here we go with the spring which i just dropped okay so put the spring in <clears throat> And then we're going to leave the key out for the moment. And let's put the detent pin back in. And push it down against the spring. All right. Um, so you can see that it uh, the spring um, is what pushes it upwards so that the pin can... Um, go into that hole um, and the key this is kind of hard to show um, so again it's this portion of the key right here that um, it, it grabs a hold of that hook and so I'm just going to push the detent pin down into place just far enough that you can see it so you can see how the key hits that hook um, I'm going to back that out a little bit so you can see how it hits that hook and then pull, pulls the pin downwards so that it's out of the way of, um, it's out of that hole in the cylinder and now the plug can turn freely. And that's how that secondary locking mechanism works. So again, very carefully remove the pin and the spring so I don't lose anything. Um, I have had those detent pins go flying across the room by just not paying attention, pulling the key out and goes, just shoots right out. All right. 
let's take a look at our driver pins now. Um, and especially take a look at pin two, because that was the one that acted funny. So let's start at the back of the lock. We're going to save pin two for last for a big reveal. Um, so here is pin six. And that is a spool like we expected. We get that kind of rotation on it. And here's pin five, which is also a spool, which we expected because of the counter rotation it gave us. And here's pin four, which is another spool, um, again, expected. And pin three also gave us counter rotation. So this is gonna be a spool as well. So there's pin three. Now I'm going to turn this around and go after pin one. And pin one, like we said, felt like a standard pin, and it is a standard pin. And big reveal time. I know you guys, the suspense is killing y'all. So here we go with pin two. Pin two is, if I can grab it, pin two is a T-pin. And I think this is the first time a T-pin has been featured on this channel. So um, this is also, in addition to being an introduction to secondary locking mechanisms, is also an introduction to T-pins. And the way the T-pin works is, um, <clears throat> let me show you, actually. Let's uh, take the key pin and put the key pin back into the plug. And then we're going to sit the T-pin, the driver pin, we're going to take the key out so that it can sit all the way down um, and now you can see this t-pin the way it's shaped allows it to move a great deal and it moves that much because there is no lower flange on it so you can see how that would give us a really super deep um, false set by being able to move that much and then because there's no lower flange on it um, the lack of a lower flange gives us um, that amount of movement that gives us that really super deep false set and, and not having a lower flange means that there's no counter rotation as the lower flange like if you look at one of the regular spool pins it has a flange at the top and the bottom and then a narrow barrel in the middle not having that lower flange means you're not going to get any counter rotation as that pin clears the shear line so that is why pin two behaved differently even though we had that significant false set so this has been an introduction to secondary locking mechanisms. In this case, it's this detent pin that you find in Schlage Alpine locks and an introduction to T-pins and how they behave as you're picking a lock. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, remember to drop a like and leave a comment or a question below. If you're new here, subscribe and ring the notification bell for more content like this. Until the next video, happy picking y'all.